Hello everyone, I'm Paul Gallagher, GFT Program Manager, and uh, joining me today is the Film Director Peter Mackey Burns. Hi Peter. Hi there. Uh, Peter's new film Rialto opens at GFT this Friday, so uh, I thought I'd ask Peter a few questions about the film for those of you who are curious about what it is. So I'll give you a brief setup. It's the story of a middle-aged man, Colm, who works in Dublin at a docks, and he's hitting a bit of a crisis point in his life. His dad's recently passed away, and then he has an encounter with a, a young man who turns out to be a, a rent boy and an, and an unexpected relationship connection develops between them. It's a film of unexpected developments, isn't it, Peter? Yes. When I first read the script, I was really gripped by it. And it's written by the wonderful writer Marco Halloran, who's worked, you know, his first two movies with Lenny Abrahamson were um, Adam and Paul and Garage. So he's an extraordinary writer who creates really interesting, compelling characters and stories that feel as if they could happen to anyone that we know. You know, people could pass in the streets and to be the subjects of his work. It's an extraordinary script. And what I was interested in when, when I read it, it asks some really interesting questions and it doesn't give up packed or simple answers, you know? So although we describe an arena there of two men looking for intimacy, one of the questions of the film for me is, how do these two flawed men find a space to talk to each other about their, their feelings? And how does that affect one man's family, you know? Yeah. And how, how do we deal with how do we find an arena? How do men find an arena to talk to each other that doesn't damage themselves and their wives, mothers, daughters, and, and wider family, you know? So I thought it was a good time to have a conversation about how emotionally inarticulate men are and the way that these two characters are almost thrown into this arena together and how they try to find how to, to, to negotiate a very difficult point in their lives. Yeah, and these the way that you do that through the film is there's kind of key scenes, aren't there, between the two men, like they end up in these quite intense, intimate conversations. It struck me that the casting had to be just right. Like those two actors, Tom Born Lola playing Colm and Tom Glyn Carney playing Jay, how did they end up in those roles? Because they really are perfect. Well, thank you. I think they're terrific actors. Um, I'd worked with Tom Von Lawler in my first movie, Daphne. And we got on pretty well. And I thought, I'd, in my next movie, I'd like to find something for Tom to do. And he's an Irish actor who lives in England, but he's a huge star in Ireland, you know. Um, he was in a great TV show called Love, Hate which I really recommend people hunt out if they like crime drama. He's extraordinary in that. He also pops up as uh, Ebony Maw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the, the Marvel movies. So yeah, he's a really interesting actor. Tom uh, Glenn Carney, I saw him in Dunkirk. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, he plays a, a character called Peter in Dunkirk. He's on a boat with Mark Rylance. He plays Mark Rylance's son. Yeah. And he came into the audition with a Dublin accent and character, you know, and he just nailed it. He's magnetic to me. He's like, um, he's got a touch of the young Albert Finney about him when you, really? you meet him, you know. And I thought the chemistry between the two actors was terrific. And, you know, there was, they were extraordinary. It was, a, it was a gift. You just put them together and let them work, stand back, you know. It was one of those. They were amazing. And as you said, this is adapted from, by Mark O'Halloran from his own play, right? And yeah. so in terms of the visual look of the film, it's clearly, it doesn't actually, I didn't know it was adapted from a play until it got to the end. And I wouldn't have, you know, there's some films you watch and you go, oh yeah, you can see that that was a play. But this, 
you've you've brought it into the real world. How did you do that? Um, well, the the script had moved on a lot from it being a play. When I read the the project, it was already at draft stage. So I read the script and I thought it was terrific. It was only later after I signed on to do it that I discovered it had been a play. Hmm. You know, so I think that's testimony to, 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 to Mark's skill as a screenwriter and reimagining his little two-hander set in one room into a, a wider canvas. And also the cinematographer I worked with, uh, Adam Scarth, who's a brilliant young cinematographer. Um, he um, shot Daphne with me. I think this is the second movie we've done together and we shot four. He shot Apostasy. I don't know if you saw that movie. Yeah, like, we had that at GFT actually. It's great. Film. Yeah, it was really, really interesting DOP. And we plan a language for the lenses and the colour palette way in advance, you know, in both films. And I think that method of having a, a, a lens plot helps tell the story because for cinematography, it's not only about the way it looks, but it's the way, it's the, way the camera feels and tells the story for the audience. So it's about the feeling in this movie of how the camera puts pressure on the character too, as well as the writing. So I think we managed to find a method to, to try to dovetail both the story and the camera putting pressure on the character. Well, I hope we did. Yeah, I mean, pressure is a good word. You feel it <laughs> through this oh, whole film. The other, the other word that I would use and wanted to ask you about is tension. I feel that there is a real present tension uh, almost in every scene, not oh, really good. knowing how Colm is going to react or you feel like he might lash out at some point or you feel like he might do something uh, to himself, uh, to harm himself. And I just wanted to ask you about creating that tension, how you went about that, because it really comes across in the film. Well, I think it's a, a combination of efforts, really. You know, the, the actors were terrific. So I tend, we do lots of research on the character, um, but we wouldn't rehearse very much at all. So I try to get the actors to do as few takes as possible so they feel fresh, you know. And in terms also in the tension and the scenes, we wouldn't do the scenes too many times. And also in, in the film when we were cutting, I had a very, you know, when you're making a film, the film tells you what it needs as you start to cut, its style emerges. And the style that emerged from, from this was to really take out stuff we didn't need that you might normally see in a movie. So I wasn't interested especially in showing the city in a wider sense, but to keep everything trained on calm to make him feel as if we're squeezing him. And also the, the, the really interesting score, I think by Valentin Hajaj really helps create tension. So for me, there's two different types of tension in a way. I love Hitchcock, who doesn't, you know, the master of tension. But there's the type of tension you can get in a thriller, which can feel sometimes a bit forced, you know. And there's another type of tension that comes from the character not knowing what's going to happen next. So we use that, and, and the old guide is if the audience don't want to know what's going to happen, going to happen next, the tension isn't working. The story isn't working. So every time we did a cut, so we filtered through the scenes we tried to make the audience not second guess yeah where we were going to be at the end of the scene so uh, it was fun to do but valentin hajaj score really helps i totally agree it was the other thing that i was going to mention actually before you did it's another surprising element of the film i think because in this kind of social drama context, you don't really expect something as cinematic as that yeah. score. Um, and even Hitchcock, you mentioned him as a different kind of film, but Hitchcock came to mind with that music. Uh, I'm glad because it was an int intention of ours. <laughs> but I think um, we said, why, oh, from the get go, I wanted to have a score that clashed with what we saw. So in social realist drama, I like to use colour in an expressionistic manner, but also with sound, 
I thought it'd be really interesting a clash between, you know, a type of orchestrated modern classical score with discord and bright colours and social realism. So somewhere in, in that arena of, of the arena of the three, I think it can create some interesting tensions, audio and visual tension, you know? Yeah. So I think the score's terrific, I have to say. And we did talk about Bernard Herrmann. Yeah. It comes oh. through. <laughs> oh, great. great. I also love Luca Levy's scores too. You know? Yeah. Actually, you know, some of the strings towards the end of the film, again, I was thinking yeah. of Under the Skin, you know, there was, there was a slight sort of sense of that. Yeah, it was one of, one of my favourite scores, Under the Skin. Mm, brilliant. You know? Well, um, he's a great, great composer. I think he's going to become a star, I have to say. Brilliant. I think it all comes together really well in this film, uh, Peter, and I just urge uh, people to go and see Rialto, which opens this Friday at GFT and is on just this weekend, so please catch it um, and come and see it. And Peter, I just want to say thanks again, Peter Mackie Burns, for joining me today. Well, thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>